Alright guys, time to talk about the Friday the 13th movies, minus Freddy vs. Jason, because I haven't seen the Nightmare movies yet, and I don't want to see that without seeing the Nightmare movies. That sounds kind of fair. Alright, so, I gotta admit, unlike Texas Chainsaw, I'm not really a fan of this series, I have to admit, because... Whereas, um, in Texas Chainsaw, I... Got definitive emotions from every movie, was able to say, I mean, say good things about all of them except for Next Generation, which really sucked, but even then it's your typical level of suckage. I am very much willing to watch all of them except for Next Generation, even though I'm not the biggest fan of the beginning. The fact that I've seen all the other movies makes it a little easier for me to, you know, go back and revisit any of those movies. This franchise was basically a bust for me in many ways, because... Uh, what's the best way to phrase this? Well, okay. In all of the Texas Chainsaw movies, I either liked the uh, cast, or I hated the cast. Here, I had... No emotion. I didn't like these teenagers, I didn't dislike the teenagers, I had no emotion. When most of these teenagers died, I go, doesn't affect me. I'm not feeling anything. Oh, I mean, like, the world death, so I go, oh, but that's because they're getting killed in gruesome ways. It's not, oh, man, I like that character. I didn't feel that that many times. Because there weren't that many movies in this franchise that I liked, and even the ones that I did like, half of them, I can honestly say I don't like that much, to tell you the truth. If I end up picking well, DVD or Blu-ray releases of these movies, for almost all of them, it's actually going to be for extras, to tell you the truth. As for rewatching these movies, I don't think that's really going to happen, minus the very couple that I did like. Well, not later. And... I do kind of agree that uh, this is a franchise that was sort of ruined with too many sequels based on like, you know, the implausibility of Jason's behavior going around, not really any likable characters and tons of them, and by the time the franchise hit its stride, the uh, uh, slasher genre was kind of dead and it stopped being horror and more just action-packed. Okay, so now that I've got that basic intro out of the way, let's talk into what I thought about each movie. Okay, so... You can basically combine the uh, first five as basically the same movie with a few twists into them, but I'll try and discuss them briefly. So part one, basically I've kind of described my thoughts on it. Uh, I just had no emotion. I didn't dislike the teenager cast, but I didn't like them either. I could not remember a single character's name while I was watching the movie. Heck, I only learned the name of the teenager that survived in this movie because I saw part two. They have to have mentioned her name in that movie several times and I couldn't remember. That girl at the beginning, I forgot her name immediately. I mean, like, now, I was kind of impressed with what they did with Jason's mother and I did do that a couple of times in the movie, but it just didn't work out for me. I don't know, because are they bad actors? No! Is this a bad movie idea? No! I, I just felt nothing. So that's why it's kind of shocking to me, because it's not that I hate or dislike, I'm not feeling anything. Part 2, it was basically the same movie, just with a different teenage cast and a different killer. But I felt like this movie was better than the first, we had better bonding moments with the teenagers, a better killer, and better interactions with said killer, and I did get freaked out more often, even though I could tell every time that it was coming. So, when I was finished with it, I said that I did like it, but not so much better. It's kind of like, shall we say, a bit of a reverse James Bond situation, because I think generally when people say that a James Bond movie is bad, most of the time they still say it's a good movie, just not as good James Bond movie. When it comes to 
a few of the Friday the 13th movies, they say, if you say it's good, I think generally it's just a good Friday the 13th movie. As a movie, not so much. But, heck, if you like this one, I'm not going to complain about that, because I liked it mostly, but just not, it, it's not that much better enough. I'm sorry that I'm repeating myself. Part 3, it was basically the same situation, except for how did Jason's appearance change and the inclusion of that one character encountering Jason before the movie started, it was kind of unnecessary. And didn't really add anything to the movie's plot. Part 4, oh my god. I, I thought I had some bad reactions from the season 1 cast that I couldn't identify with them. Well, part 4 was even worse, because I couldn't... I feel anything for these characters, we got practically no personalities from them, they were just being jerks most of the time, Tommy was being mysterious, sure we do get Rob going into avenging his sister, but I didn't feel anything for him, although his death, that was pretty different and kind of got to me. <coughs> Sorry, but I just did not like this movie, and Jason's appearance changes again. Oh, man. And then Tommy shaving his head and doing that whole thing with Jason. The, how is he able to do that? It's almost as bad as, what's her face, a Ginny from the second movie putting on Jason's mother's shirt and then acting like she's his mother? Well, how do you know that Jason has a link to his mother? Oh, now, you know his mother terrorized the camp uh, in the first movie, but how do you know he's got the link? Just, what? It's basically just as bad, so, yeah. Hated that one. And then part five, now they do try and give the cast a little bit more personality and make them uh, more sympathetic. I realized that they were trying to do that, but again, I just couldn't care for them. And Tommy in this movie, well, he's really in the movie just to be there because for almost the entire movie, he does nothing except just... And then offer a few words of advice, just in a monotone voice that just makes sense, so just nobody... You, you know what I mean? It's like me in my first channel, I was the monotone guy. Added no emotion. And if you're wondering why I'm not rating these movies, it's because I can't give a rating to them. I'm serious. Okay. Now, moving into the second half of the Friday the 13th movies, things began to pick up, because... As I stated, they did become a little more action-packed, and a little more, uh... I hate to use this because I don't think it applies to all five of them, but more supernatural being... In terms of Jason, rather than just him just not being able to die, kind of like what little I know of Michael Myers... And also, I just began to like the story arcs that we got for the characters, even though there isn't that much to them. So, individual reactions to the movies. Jason Lives, I actually really liked that movie. I was laughing many times, it felt like the movie had an energy to it that the other five just didn't have. I was actually able to remember the characters names in there, and even though they've got their issues, they acted a lot more sensible, like there was a little bit more camaraderie, willing to take risks, and just, it was a better movie. So, for that, I think I'll give that 4 out of 5. I can definitively give that one a rating. Part 7, um, I didn't hate it, and I did like what they were doing with Tiffany, I think her name was, and that Doctor character adding more problems to the movie. You know, it's just a Doctor character that acts totally arrogant, hiding stuff really for his own purpose. So I was able to get a bit of an angle emotion and actually was able to kind of support Jason killing a few of the people. 
And let me tell you, when those last few characters were fighting for Jason, I was really nervous for them. Something that I didn't feel in any of the movies before then, except for Part 6. So, again, a nice movie, although I think that would I rate 3 out of 5, uh, along with Jason Takes Manhattan, where I basically felt the same way. Because Jason Takes Manhattan, I did like the change of sceneries in the movie, even though it was kind of unnecessary. Now, they're all a bit of too much ridiculousness because, uh, for instance, the amount of crazy actions that the uh, teenagers get into, you know, like that girl drying all over herself, all the um, drugs going on, the, the nerd guy trying to film everything, and how Jason was able to go undetected on the ship for so long, and then is able to casually stroll through Manhattan, you know, and nobody... Looks at a guy with a hockey mask or, like, notices his stench, because I'd imagine he's pretty stinky. And then, like, how his face changed again, and then how he dissolves into a boy at the end of the movie. Now, the way you killed him, I believe that, but dissolving into a boy in the face... Yeah. And that movie was a little bit long for my taste. You could have trimmed it by a couple minutes. Hmm? So... Not completely good, but I got better emotions from that movie. 3 out of 5 again. Okay, Jason Goes to Hell. Now, this one is kind of a blend of what I've been talking about for Jason Lives and then Part 7 and 8. Because it did have the uh, faster-paced atmosphere, and it did have better characters that I felt good towards, but... Bits that it did with the plot were kind of unnecessary, kind of stupid, and just a little bit too far-fetched. More just trying to make this movie for money, like I'm sure a couple of the others were done for also. Although I did like that bit at the end where Freddy's hand just bursts out and grabs the mask. <laughs> I did care for the characters, as I think I've already mentioned, and I did laugh many times, something that Part 7 and 8 didn't really make me do, but I can tell that it's not as strong storytelling, even though it's not complete crap. So again, it gets free. Now, moving on to Jason X. Okay, let me tell you, I fully expected not to like this because, whoa, whoa, wait, set in the future and in space? Just, oh, come on, there was no way that this can be good. No way. I mean, like, we already have so many space movies where a super crazy maniac or some strange alien force breaks in a spaceship, space lab, scientific facility, and just wreaks havoc. I mean, like, Doom, Resident Evil, Star Wars, several Star Trek episodes. Come on, right? It's been done before. But surprisingly, what they turned out actually was really good for me, because I like the characters that they have. I got tense in many situations, caring for the characters. I again got spooked by a couple of things that Jason did. The way the people treated Jason, at first I didn't really believe that, but the more I thought about it, the more I'm like, actually, you know what? I think this really is not bad behavior. Sure that a uh, chick from now is freaking out, but come on, you think about everyone else's position. She's been frozen for 400 years, she's in an environment that she has absolutely no knowledge or confidence about. Uh, who would it be freaking? And she's obviously had an experience with Jason and is still suffering from the stress. That's very plausible behavior. And then the way that they carried everything out for the rest of the movie, it actually was not bad. Very good behavior. Although, the, uh... What's the term for her? The, uh... Well, I hate to use this because I don't think that's the term, but droid woman, you know, basically being the killing machine and kicking Jason's butt. Well, why did you have to, you know, kind of change her personality in the middle of the movie? That kind of heard it a little and just was there just to be there. Had you the character been more like that over the course of the movie, that would have been better. 
And then, um, okay, here's a bit where I think physics don't apply, because you know how when the ship originally blows up and Jason is flying straight towards the ship, and then how that black mercenary guy... Okay, this is Jason, this is the black mercenary guy. <laughs> it doesn't work like that, and how did he get all the way over here? Because, you know, he was on the ship just before it exploded, so you're telling me he... Flew a good ways this way, stopped himself, and went pew right over there to Jason? What? And when Jason and that black guy are burning up in the atmosphere of Earth 2, did it have to be Earth 2? Couldn't you have just done it in any random planet? Because. I don't know. But these are all just minor issues I had with the movie. I was excited. I like the characters. The new style actually worked for me. So, I liked it. Free critique for personally. I was impressed. Now, finally, getting a bit long, but since it's the last one, I'll just do this as one part. Friday the 13th, the remake. Okay, so I have to admit, I've actually seen this movie twice. Once before I saw any of the originals, and then just after I saw the originals. Both times it was the killer cut. Okay, so... When I first saw the movie, I liked it, but... I thought it had a couple of flaws, because I didn't think the characters, you know, had the greatest death to them. That... Uh, it was somewhat over the top. That the ending was kind of stupid, and just that, um... There wasn't much to this movie. But, having seen all the other movies, looking at this movie, I actually think it's better than most of the mo other movies out there. Because if I had to code awake my three favorite Friday the 13th movies, I'm pretty sure the order would go... Remake X lives. Because I haven't seen Freddy vs. Jason, I don't know where that's gonna rank. But anyways. We watched in the movie, I actually find that there's various homages that that movie did to the other ones that I liked. And it improved upon them, because Jason, he was a lot more menacing than he was in all the other movies. Because very few times was I ever scared by Jason. I was scared of what he might do to a couple of characters, but by Jason himself, just looking at him, nah, it's basically the same relation of, um, Leatherface in the original Texas Chainsaw movies to Leatherface in the remake of Texas Chainsaw. Like in the originals, if Jason's standing there, I'd only be scared of him if he was running at me with a sharp object and I knew he was going to kill me. If I saw the Jason in the remake, I'd be scared of him just by looking at him. Then there's, um, the, uh, banter that the teenagers throw at each other, it just worked better in this movie than it did in the original, which I don't fully understand because it, most of it isn't that much different. They just show the nudity a little bit different, and then they show them having drugs, which of course they won't go to do in the originals that many times because, one, I don't think teens were as uh, stereotyped to do that, and also this was earlier when they were having teen actors. So I got scared for these characters, I got sad when a couple of them bit the dust, I thought the kill scenes were very creative, they made me go several times, and ooh. The ending I do think is still kind of stupid, but that's really the only thing I dislike about the movie now. So, four on both scales. Yeah, sue me, but let me tell you, okay, I am not trying to state that every remake movie of these classic teen horror series is better, okay, because I do like the original Texas Chainsaw. Sure, I prefer the remake over it, but I like it. It's just a different case here, and if you don't like those movies, well, fine, but try to keep an open mind, unlike some stupid Amazon user that I saw spamming many people's reviews when they said that they liked it. Okay, so, well, I went on for a while, but I'm glad to have gotten this out of the way, so 
Now I can officially close the book on the Friday the 13th franchise now that I've seen all the pure Jason movies and I made this video for you guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this even though the introduction was kind of a bit long, but I hope once I got in the groove you guys began to like this better, okay? See ya.